Mining is an obviously vital part of Minecraft, although it can take a ton of time. So in this video, I'll show you only the fastest ways of getting every ore material in the game. There are special tricks for each and every ore material that make you get more of them. So of course, the most obvious thing is having a good pickaxe. Efficiency makes you mine things, well, more efficiently or quicker. Of course, also we have fortune, and that adds a massive benefit as well. So basically, the benefit does depend on the ore, but they're almost all the same. It multiplies the average amount of materials you'll get on that ore by 2.2. So you get 2.2 times the diamonds, the lapis, the emeralds, the copper, the coal. However, there's only one exception, and that is actually redstone ore. For whatever reason, and I'm not sure why, redstone ore only gives you 33% more, or 1.33 times the amount of material when mined with fortune. But either way, obviously, that's the number one way of mining these things more efficiently. Now, now on to each material specifically, and the tricks for all of these, because there's a lot of them. The best two places to mine iron are in giant iron ore veins. These will spawn the deep slate layer, and you'll know what they are because it's basically a mix of tough as well as iron. If you continue to mine the tough around it once all the exposed iron is gone, you will find more and more iron to an insane degree, where there can literally be over 10,000 iron ore in one of these giant iron ore veins. So that's certainly one of the best places to mine iron. The other one is the stony or jack peaks. So in this biome there's a ton of exposed iron ore up here. It's also the easier to mine stone iron ore variety. So how do you actually use these two locations to mine it the quickest? Well you want to go on chunkbase.com and type in the seed for your world. If you don't have your seed you can simply type slash seed or check your world's options in bedrock edition. Then go down here on the seed map and basically on this list of features make sure to enable ore veins. Scroll down to the map and you'll notice we're seeing tons of different iron ore veins around around here. Find your coordinates and find an iron ore vein of the medium or hopefully large varieties as close to you as you can. Then once you've found where this giant ore vein is and you start to mine it out, what you want to do is you want to set up a beacon. And then once you have that haste to effect, you can mine through this much quicker, actually instantly mining that tough, which is really nice. And it's super easy just to go through here with your fortune 3 pickaxe, mining all kinds of iron ore, mining the tough, finding more iron ore, and even the occasional raw iron block is able to spawn here. So this is one of the most efficient ways of getting iron. Of course, you could also build an iron farm if you want. And because the location of all the iron here tends to be fairly localized, it should still all be in range of that haste 2 beacon. And literally in like one minute there, we have like three stacks of raw iron. If you want to do the mountainside mining method, then basically get yourself a lytra and some fireworks, if you want to do this the most efficient way, and fly down to where you see some of the ore, then mine out the ore. Oftentimes there's really big clusters of ore here, and once you've mined out an area, simply fly fly on to another area and keep mining it out. I've been able to get enough iron for an entire beacon just mining on a stony peaks after only doing so for maybe half an hour. And of course this does also work in basically any tall mountain biome, even a very tall amount of generation, but the stony peaks is definitely the best because in the most of it is exposed. What about gold? Well you can find a lot of gold inside of the mesa biome because it's sort of meant to be like the wild west where there was a lot of gold mines and different gold rushes, but it is also very commonly found inside of the nether. And if you're in Java Edition, you can also set up a gold farm on the roof of the nether. Well, for Badlands or Mesa Biome Gold, the most efficient way to mine it is you want to have night vision and of course a good pickaxe. And you basically want to go in an area that is the stone layer. So not the terracotta and also not the deep slate. It's sort of this range between about 0 and 50. And with that night vision on, you can see all the different pieces of gold ore that generate all around the sides. So for instance, you can notice here, we have tons of surface gold ore that is just going around everywhere really. So having a lighter and scaffolding and different building blocks to mine across this wide range of Y levels is almost always a really good idea, as usually the caves you'll find with lots of exposed gold are like this. If you want to mine gold in the nether, just be aware that mining any gold ore in the nether does make the piglins angry, and especially if you're in a biome where piglins generate really frequently, like let's say the crimson forest, you want to have some really good armor, like let's say diamond armor. Of course, also because this is the nether, a fire resistance potion is almost always a good idea. And of course, you may be noticing something, I'm mining the gold here with fortune, but is that the most efficient way? Well, technically not. Technically, the most efficient way is actually to mine this with silk touch, if you do have silk touch, and then to smelt that, but as you can for instance see right here, you have to be really aware of any lava pockets, as they do tend to be in the game a lot. And so you'll basically get slightly more out of this, because when you mine the nether gold ore with fortune, you get slightly under 9 gold nuggets as an average. 
of a silk touch when you smelt these, you always get one of the gold ingots, which is of course equivalent to nine gold nuggets. Also a good thing is, if you're mining this of course with fortune, you will get levels from that gold ore. However, if you're mining it with silk touch, you can get some levels by putting that silk touch pickaxe in your offhand and mining some quartz with your main hand. And again, just like the mesa, the efficiency of mining gold in the nether is honestly a lot due on which area you're in. Also, any piglin you find will be hostile at you no matter whether you wear gold or not if you are mining the gold ore here. So what I would suggest is if you do see a piglin, of course not a zombified piglin, just to kill it before it even comes near you or even before it notices you, because it's definitely worthwhile to do that and not risk getting killed. Redstone, there's two main ways of getting this really efficiently. The first one is super deep underground and let's say strip mining underground or even just caving underground. Redstone doesn't have an air exposure rule, so because of that you will find absolutely huge amounts of it inside of caves. And the second method is a witch farm. Now witch farms are actually fairly cheap and easy to build, basically just using a lot of string and tripwire hooks. And the great thing about a witch farm is that they give you super large amounts of redstone dust. So you want to go to your caves that are as low down as you possibly can. Again, because there's none of that air exposure, caves are definitely much better than strip mining. I'd also suggest illuminating the place by drinking night vision. Then you can see a lot better, and for instance, the redstone over on this wall here. As I said earlier, fortune is least effective on redstone, and so because of that, it's not necessarily a bad idea to go redstone mining before you have a fortune pickaxe, but of course fortune will give you about 33% more. As you can see, redstone is actually fairly common underground, and so if I were you, what I would do is bring a crafting table with you. Now the reason why is that then you can craft all the redstone dust that you found into redstone blocks. And already just after mining for like a minute, we have 20 redstone blocks. And if you want to do the witch farm method, you want to go on a seed map and find the super sort of light green blue color, then find a witch hut that is near your base as close as possible, mark down those coordinates and travel to it. A witch hut looks like this. You want to be very careful at this structure, but there's basically three spawn floors for witches here. You can make a rather small build and efficient witch farm. There's an insane amount of different designs, and so I would definitely suggest looking up a witch farm design if you want huge amounts of redstone dust. And for instance, right here we have sections for each three spawn floors, and when they spawn in they're pushed to the edge and die in this entity cramming. If you want to get emeralds in Minecraft, there's two main places. The first one is tall mountains, so of course stony peaks are best, but there's also the jagged peaks and the frozen peaks. And the second way is by trading with villagers, of course different villagers trades, they will give you emeralds in return for certain items. So those are the two ways of getting emeralds inside of Minecraft, but how do we do these two methods the most efficiently? If you want to get emeralds by mining them, you should only ever do this once you have silk touch. In fact, it's extremely wasteful and a bad idea to ever mine any emerald ore in any situation unless you have silk touch, because of course then it's turning into the easy to get emerald item. However, if you want to mine it this way, what you want to do is put on elytra and of course firework rockets in your your hand, then you can go from places in the mountain where there's, let's say, lots of these emerald ores that show up. It definitely depends a lot on how many you see, but the higher up the mountain is, the more there should technically be. If you want the deep slate emerald ore, you want to go super low down, around about Y0, basically as soon as deep slate starts spawning into the game, and to try and find the super rare variant there, although it's quite difficult. Then once you've mined out a certain section, you should fly around and try and find an area where there is another emerald ore. And if you want to get emeralds, not emerald ore, the most efficient way, what you want to do is set up a very large villager trading system, and you want to get some villager trades set up with discounted villagers that are some of the cheapest in the game. So for instance, one of my personal favorites is the one stone for one emerald trade. So you could literally turn a little bit of mining into hundreds and hundreds of emeralds very, very quickly. I've actually used this method in this world to get myself thousands of emeralds. As every time you zombify a villager, its price goes down by five to get this trade down to the level where it's only one stone for one emerald. The best place to find lapis inside of Minecraft is caves that are around Y0, especially if they're waterlogged. You see, if there are waterlogged caves, then you do not have the issue of the air exposure rule. And so inside of these aquifer-like caves, there's insane amounts of lapis around the area where the stone and deep slate layer mix. As you can see right here, there's lapis around basically every single corner. 
So this is definitely the best place to get a huge amount of this blue block if you want it. And the other way of getting lapis lazuli in Minecraft is from villagers, as the cleric villagers have a trade that goes from one emerald to one lapis lazuli. So for the most efficient way of mining lapis, you want to find an ocean, and then basically drink night fission, as well as drink a potion of water breathing. And look along the ocean floor for any large exposed aquifer caves, like the one that's right down here. Basically dive lower and lower into the cave as far as you can go, until you're about at the area where the deep slate and stone start to mix, as this is centered around about Y0, then you want to have a silk touch pickaxe, not a fortune one, and mine as much of this lapis as you can possibly find. If you're wondering why you'd want to mine this with silk touch instead of fortune, it's basically that lapis drops so many lapis lazuli when you mine it, that you can get up to 36 lapis lazuli from one lapis lazuli ore. And so because of that, it'll be much more efficient if you're mining a huge amount of this, to fill your inventory up with this, instead of mining them with fortune and crafting them into blocks. And we now have three and a half stacks of lapis lazuli. How would you use the cleric villagers to get as much lapis as possible? Well, basically you want to get a good source of emeralds. One thing you could do if you've discounted these is turn one gold ingot into one emerald, and then turn one emerald into one lapis. Also, as I mentioned previously, you can use stone if you have these discounted to get yourself a whole bunch of emeralds from the stonemasons, and then use those emeralds to turn one piece of stone directly into one piece of lapis. So whatever method you use, you can actually really efficiently do this, as technically that makes lapis be the exact same price or exact same value as emeralds would be. Copper spawns super commonly in three different places. The first one is in the stony beach biome. There will be large exposed blobs of copper ore that you can see all across the surface of this area. Inside the dripstone caves biome, there is also a huge amount of copper ore that generates, much more here than in any other cave biome in the game. And the third one is not a biome, but it can generate basically anywhere. For instance, this one is in the underwater cave, and that is a large copper ore vein. You'll know it's a giant copper ore vein because there's going to be a big amount of andesite next to tons of copper ore, and there'll also be the very occasional raw copper ore block like this one right here. And so if you've stumbled upon one of these, this is also a source of literally thousands upon thousands of copper ore. There's not a whole lot to copper ore generating on the stony beaches, and so really all you need to mine this out is just a pickaxe, but what you could do if you want is you could bring a boat or maybe a lytra, so you can sort of fly around the coastline looking out for more pieces of copper ore, but they do tend to be really common. The best way of mining out copper ore if you want to do this in the dripstone cave is to have a potion of night vision, and also of course a good pickaxe, you want a crafting table and a shulker box. The reason why you want those items is because the copper ore is usually incredibly common inside of this biome. And because you get almost 8 pieces of copper ore on average per piece mined, with also the copper ore itself being very common in the dripstone caves. When I'm mining copper ore in this biome, it almost always happens for me that I'll quickly run out of inventory room, and so because of that I'll bring a shulker box and inside of it store all of the raw copper that I've been able to mine, and then what you can do with the crafting table if you especially run out of room is craft a whole bunch of these into blocks of raw copper and then you'll even have more storage space for later. The most efficient way of mining copper with the large copper ore veins is to put your seed in chunkbase.com and enable right here the ore veins tab then zoom in a bit and scroll around for any copper ore veins. So for instance right here we have a copper vein that is large at these coordinates. Simply set up a beacon next to this giant copper ore vein as it does really make sense as you're basically staying in a very similar area, but it's super dense in copper ore, and we can go through here and efficiently mine out this thing, being able to instantly mine the stone, as well as instantly mine the ground around here. For instance, right here we've already mined out about 8 stacks of raw copper in literally under a minute. So definitely set up all your copper mines around the large copper ore veins if you happen to find those. Now for the one everyone's been waiting for, what are the best places and the fastest ways then to mine diamonds in Minecraft? Well the first one is with this. These are diamond fossils. Diamond fossils are an amazing part of the game, and they generate actually fairly frequently depending on what biome you're in. You'll notice it's basically a mix of bone blocks and diamond ore, which of course gives you double value. And there can be a massive amount of diamond ore that generates with these, being able to get you, let's say, even half a stack of diamonds per diamond fossil. The other location is in the deepest underwater aquifer caves you can possibly find. This is because of the diamond air exposure rule, 
if you are at a very low level that can have a lot of diamonds that spawn in there, and you're also in an underwater cave, then you will find much more diamonds than an above water cave that is still at a very low Y level. And of course, these would have to be the lowest down you could possibly get. So the diamond fossil method is a little bit complicated, but in my opinion, is definitely worth it. What you want to do is you want to go on a seed map and try and find a giant desert and also disable everything but just the fossil setting up here and scroll down here and notice how insanely common diamond fossils can be. It will tell you what's in them. It'll say fossil or diamond fossil, but the Y level here is really important. So if it's in a negative Y level, it's diamond. If it's in a positive Y level, it is a coal fossil. And you can notice in a decently sized desert like this, if we zoom in, there are going to be hundreds upon hundreds of diamond fossils. And the same is true with the mangrove swamp. If you're in Java edition. In Bedrock, the mangrove swamp does not have diamond fossils. And it'll also be like that in the swamp in either Bedrock or Java. So what you want to do is find a large diamond fossil mining desert and keep this seed map up on a separate tab and try and find a location where there's a ton of these fossils in a row. What you then want to do is go down to one of them. And once you've fully mined out all the diamonds here, you then want to go down until you're at Y level, negative 58. And the reason why is of course that's the level that has the most diamonds in the entire game. This is a really advanced combo method of mining diamond fossils and strip mining, and it's definitely the most efficient way of getting diamonds in the entire game. Now they're at negative 57 or negative 58, you then want to find the coordinates of the next fossil and go in that direction. You can see in this chart here basically how this would work. You would just go from fossil to fossil, having the most efficient path be mined out there, and you can do this by following your coordinates. This should work on Bedrock and on Java Edition. And to mine them in these underwater aquifer caves, once you find find one. These could be connecting to the ocean or somewhere else. You want to drink a potion of water breathing as well as a potion of night vision. Maybe have some extra on you and basically swim around trying to get to the absolute deepest aquifer caves you can find. And if you happen to find some diamond ore on the wall there, then of course mine that with a fortune or silk touch pickaxe. There is always a traditional strip mining at level negative 58, but if you want to get something that is technically quicker, then you can basically use these to navigate around from diamond ore to diamond ore, also finding a lot of other ores around this level as well. The most efficient place to find coal in Minecraft is tall mountains, and stony peaks are the best variant of these, with coal that generates really frequently. That's really the fastest way of finding coal, is mining through here with fortune. Now if you want some tips of how to do this, although you could use elytra, the coal ore is actually so common here, you really don't need to, so I would suggest going from super large pocket of coal to super large pocket of coal around here. Once you stop at one, you can go around and definitely see others within range. However, However, if you don't have any large mountains nearby, there are a couple other things you can do if you need coal, or if you need what coal can give you. The first one is charcoal. If you smelt a wooden log of any type of Minecraft, except for of course the nether woods inside of a furnace, that will convert into a piece of charcoal. And the one benefit of that is that then you can use that as a fuel, smelting eight items, but also you can craft it into torches. However, if you don't want to do this, as it is somewhat inefficient, another really good fuel source inside the game is bamboo. Bamboo is super common, grows very quickly, and although the bamboo item itself does not smelt very many items, it can be crafted down into sticks to be more efficient, and with the hopper chest connected up to your furnace, you could really easily use bamboo as a good fuel source. But of course the Stony Peaks method of mining coal is still a really good one. Even on other tall mountain biomes, if you do happen to find some coal that's sort of sticking out from some exposed stone there, you can also find a huge amount of coal here as well. Maybe take a shovel to clear all the snow off of the top of the peak, and you could use this to get a much better view of where all the coal is at. Anyway, those are the fastest methods of getting every single ore item in the entire game. If you enjoyed, make sure to press the like button, subscribe to see more like this, and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye!